If you're a beginner drone pilot and you're wanting to hone your flying skills, then this is the video for you. Hi, it's Ken here with UAV Coach. In this video, we'll start out with a quick review of getting in the air for beginners, then we'll transition you into flying. So let's get started. To start out, if you're a beginner drone pilot who just wants to fly for fun, for now anyway, you need to be aware of the trust test required by the FAA. The Recreational UAS Safety Test or Trust is an online knowledge test that you can't fail, but it is required by the FAA for recreational pilots. Of course, if you want to fly for commercial purposes, you have to become certified as a remote pilot under FAA Part 107 requirements. UAV Coach is an approved FAA test administrator for the trust test and they have a guaranteed course for obtaining the Part 107 license as well. Before launching your drone, there are a few things that you should have on a checklist to make sure you accomplish them before every flight. Know where you'll be flying and what obstacles or hazards might exist. Watch the weather starting 24 to 48 hours before you plan to fly. Don't forget that you need to have at least three statuette miles of visibility. You need to always be able to see your drone and you must fly at least 500 feet below any clouds. Also monitor winds. The Mini SE can hover in 22 mile per hour winds according to DJI, but you need to use caution if wind speeds are getting close to that. Last and definitely not least is to know what rules, regulations, and or laws apply to you. In the United States, there are basically three levels of regulations and laws that you need to be aware of. First is local laws. This can be town or city laws or county, parish or borough laws. Generally, these can be found by looking up the city or county website and search for the word drone or aircraft. Many local entities have laws or regulations that specifically prohibit drone use in parks or from the governed property. If you're still unsure, email a council member or a representative. You can be fined if you don't follow these laws or regulations. There's state laws. Many states have laws that apply to drones. Generally speaking, state laws focus on privacy issues. These laws state that you cannot fly a drone or hover in places where people have a reasonable expectation of privacy. These laws can be found on state websites. State parks also may have restrictions or requirements that must be followed. Last is federal laws. This is primarily speaking to the FAA and federal airspace laws, but also includes prohibitions in national parks, national forests or national wildlife areas. This is where apps like AirMap or Aloft and others can be very helpful in keeping you legal and safe. It's very easy to get FAA approval through these apps in areas that require FAA approval. But keep in mind that there are some areas that are just prohibited period. So to summarize and clarify some questions that I get often from my students, Remember that the FAA governs all airspace in the U.S. If you're flying a drone, there are FAA rules that apply to you, and these are covered in the trust test that you must take even as a recreational pilot. But just because the FAA may say it's okay to fly in the airspace you're in, the local or state entity that governs the ground that you're standing on may not allow you to take off from their ground. That's the conundrum in the U.S. as of the time this video was made. At some point in the future, hopefully all the government entities will start to align their rules. But until then, you need to know these little nuances. All right, now let's head outside and start flying. All right, so we've arrived at our location. We've completed our checklist and our equipment is all ready to go. What we want to do is become familiar with the app, the DJI Fly app, and also get comfortable with controlling the drone. To start off, when we launch the app, this will be the screen that we get first. Then what you want to do is turn on the controller, wait till you see the indication down here that the controller is connected, and then we'll turn on the drone. Once the drone's connected, 
you'll either get this startup screen or the app will go directly into the camera mode. We'll start at the top left looking at the flight mode. Currently it's in P mode, which is normal or positioning mode. If you, if you press that once, it'll take you to sport mode. Press it again, it'll take it to cinema mode or cinematic mode. Sport mode is fast and we won't suggest that for beginners. C mode is cinematic, which slows it down. And we will do some of our exercises today in cinematic mode. For right now, we'll go back to P mode. Next is system status. You can see that it says takeoff permitted. If we click on this, it brings up our pre-flight check. You can see that our indication is normal. Here you'll also set your return to home altitude. This is important because in an emergency situation, you want to know that your return to home altitude is set above any obstacles in your area, trees or buildings. So you want to pay attention to this before you take off. You want to determine how tall the trees are around you or buildings and make sure that you have that set above that in case you have to hit the return to home button or if it goes to fail safe return to home and flies back at that altitude. You also have max altitude set here in the United States that should be set below 400 feet and your maximum distance. I would recommend keeping this as small as possible because if you end up having a drone runaway, this will help keep the, the area that you have to look smaller. Next is battery information. If you click on that, you can see time remaining until return to home, time remaining until forced landing, and time remaining until battery depleted. Currently, because we're on the ground, it doesn't give you times in there. Next is your remote control signal, your controller signal. It'll tell you whether it's strong, weak, or moderate. Then you have your satellites. Here you can see that we have moderately strong signal. We've locked in 13, 13 or 14 satellites. Okay, now that you know more about the app, we'll jump into six different flight exercises that will help to get you started. Practice these until you become comfortable and the control movements become second nature. We'll do these in cinema mode or cinematic mode to accentuate joystick movement, but you should practice in both P mode and C mode. In P mode, the stick movement is much less because the drone moves much quicker. First is just moving the drone forward and back using pitch on the right joystick. You want to do this as slowly as you can and gently as you can. Just practice going forward, stopping smoothly, and then go backwards. You want to try to control this and do it nice and smooth. Next is going left to right or rolling. Again, nice and gentle. You want to move to the right, stop gently, move to the left. Third is thrust. For this, we'll use the left joystick. When you push the joystick forward, the drone goes up. When you bring the joystick down, the drone comes down. Practice doing these as well. Gently going up and gently coming down. Fourth is simply yawing in place. That's done using the left joystick. You move it to the left, the drone rotates to the left, and again you want to do this nice and gentle, and you want to get familiar with doing this nice and smooth. You want to make these motions nice and smooth. This becomes very important once you get into cinematic shots, which we'll cover in another video. The next exercise is maneuvering or obstacle avoidance. To do this, I'm going to move into cinematic mode so that we can do this in slow speed and you can see more accentuation in the joystick to see what we're doing. 
So I'll be using just the right joystick and I'm going to maneuver to the right of the cone. I'll start out moving forward and then slowly move to the right and then move around the object. We can do the same way moving to the left. Move forward, move the drone to the left, and then continue forward. Now to go over an object, you'll have to use both the right and the left joystick. So again, as we approach the obstacle, then you'll slowly increase thrust on the left joystick and go up and over. These exercises should be practiced going backwards as well. Next is target practice and inverted controls. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. For target practice you want to take off from one location then use the right joystick to move to another location position it over the location and land and then practice it going back take off again move the right joystick to get it back over and land now move to the opposite side where the drone is facing you Go ahead and take off and now move the drone to the other location. You'll notice that you move the joystick to the left to get the drone to move to your right and then land again. Take off. And practice going the other direction. This takes some practice to do this right the first time every time. Landing. So again you want to keep practicing these items. Also practice the other maneuvers using inverted controls. Bring the drone over the center and this time move it backwards. And bring it forward. Be careful not to hit yourself. Also practice the other maneuvers in inverted controls. Step back so that you don't get injured. Do the obstacle avoidance and going around. The last thing we'll discuss is emergency procedures and the need to make sure your return to home altitude is set correctly. The failsafe return to home function activates if the controller loses connection with the drone for more than 11 seconds on the DJI Mini SE. In this case the drone will execute the return to home feature. You shouldn't rely on this function but in the case of a lost connection this is what the drone should do. Another emergency situation that you could experience is if you lose your display. Keep in mind that you probably still have control of the drone with the controller. This accentuates the point that you should always know where the drone is and be able to see it so that you can safely bring it back home. Well that's all for this video. Hopefully you find these items helpful in becoming a proficient drone pilot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified of our next video. I'll be doing another video soon where we'll get into precision flying, but until then, all of us here at UAV Coach wish you blue skies and safe flying. We'll see you soon.